Physical scientists have a lot to contribute to understanding climate change because they are able to say how is it that we humans have emitted greenhouse gases and created the changes in our climate system we are faced with. But I think we also need social scientists because it is humans that are causing this problem. And so as we are source of the problem, I think we are source of the solution. So far, uh, the world has uh, experienced a couple of examples of what climate change might mean. One example is the heat wave in Europe, 2005 in Europe. It uh, killed around 35,000 people, mostly elderly populations. The lesson we draw from this event, which we cannot attribute to climate change, but can tell us, can foretell what can happen to us, the lessons we get from this are, are mostly that we need for sure physical scientists to tell us when uh, we will get a hazard, such as a heat wave or a hurricane. But we also need social scientists to help us understand whether we are prepared to respond to these hazards, whether we have uh, access to family support, to networks, to public support, and not only income and, and uh, jobs that provide us that security to recover from those hazards. We can tell many populations, you need to move away from a wildfire prone area. You need to go away from coastal areas. That's easy to say, but we know that people are attached to places. We cannot just say, go away from there. We know from our report that there are many actions that are not feasible because they are biophysical constraints. But there are others that are not feasible because they are institutional and political constraints. So we need both physical and social scientists working together to explore those constraints and those opportunities. In the climate arena, we refer to uh, environmental justice issues when we indicate that it has been wealthy populations and wealthy countries that have contributed most to carbon emissions. And that said, it is mostly populations and economic activities in such countries as Asian countries and Latin American countries and uh, African countries particularly who are expected and predicted to suffer the most because first of all they do not have the uh, infrastructures, the institutional capacity uh, and other means to to better uh, mediate and, and mitigate the impacts of these stresses. So, I mean, no one will escape, but at the level at which we are currently, uh, we have found that some populations are more vulnerable. We are faced with a closing window of opportunity to undertake action. It is really narrow and it's really closing. And I think that working together with decision makers, we can take advantage of those options we still have available and of better ways to make them happen and benefit as much people as we can.